Good morning, family. Good morning. Um, so last week we talked about why it was necessary for God to present himself um, to us as man, or why it was necessary for Jesus to be born. Uh, we're going to today pretty much just read the story of Jesus' birth, um, and we're going to kind of cross over into Matthew for some additional details at some points. Um, and then next week, we're going to discuss the result of that, uh, what, what happened because Jesus came, and that should hopefully guide us into the next year. So to start with, in Luke chapter 2, we're going to pretty much read all of Luke chapter 2, so if you want to follow along in your Bibles, you can, you can go there, um, and then we'll also, you can also mark uh, Matthew uh, chapters 1 and 2. Uh, are two and three, um, and we'll be crossing over into there a couple of different times. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. An angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. Find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as they had been told to them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens a womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came into the Spirit, into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what had been said about him. And Simeon blessed him and to, said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. 
She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and praying night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she gives... She began to give thanks to God and speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Now Luke is, uh, it's not, not the Christmas story we, we normally read to each other. We normally go to Matthew for a lot of that. But I think that Luke's intended audience is people who are not overly familiar with what's going on. He's trying to be informative. And so he leaves out some necessary details, or at least necessary details for us. In the book of Matthew, um, starting in in, uh, chapter 1, we actually read Mary being told about the coming of Jesus. In verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be a child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus." For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, in Luke, we read about the, the shepherds, the, the, the three shepherds specifically that came and uh, visited Jesus while he was in the manger. In Matthew, we're going to read about the three magi or three wise men, uh, depending on what translation you're, you're going with. Um, and, and to give you some context, the magi, uh, they, they are people who practice uh, divination usually. Um, through astronomy and astrology, but they are generally uh, very high on the social hierarchy. These are, these are people who advise kings and council members, um, and so that's why they practice divination a lot of times is to provide answers. Um, so these, these men are uniquely qualified to recognize a star that was not there the previous night because these are people who study the stars. In chapter 2 of Matthew, we read, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem was with him, and and all And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born, and they told him in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall become a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent to them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And so now as we go into Jesus' story, we see at the very start of his life is, is wrought with peril and trouble and tribulation. Jesus' life did not begin easily, and it would not end easily. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. 
And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted, because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth. So that was so what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled that he would be called a Nazarene. I don't have much to tell you about this story this morning. It's, uh, it's a powerful story of hope. It's a story that is reconciling years and years of, of um, love and desire and hope from God's people, hope for uh, reconciliation to him and hope to be um, restored to his, his glorious uh, mercy. Um, for the Christian today, it's a story that presents the beginnings of salvation. It presents the beginnings of, of our hope. Not that our hope lies in Jesus' birth, but that the birth was necessary to give us hope in his death. But I want to point out to you this morning that this entire story is made possible because good people chose to obey. That, that when Jesus was t- uh, uh, instructed by the Father to go, to go down and to make himself a sacrifice on the altar, that Jesus, the Son of God, obeyed. That when Mary was informed that she would be carrying the Son of God and that she would be uh, responsible for his upbringing, she obeyed. Now, when Joseph was told to take this woman who was pregnant with a child that was not his own, that he would raise that child to be his own, that he would leave everything behind and flee to Egypt for the sake of this child and then leave everything behind and go back to a place that he wasn't even from, that he obeyed. And because of all these things, thousands and thousands of years later, we still have hope. There is no end to the benefit, to the blessing that comes from when good people listen and obey to God. And so this morning, as you prepare to go and spend time with your families and hopefully reminding yourselves of the story of Jesus and the humble beginnings of our own salvation, that you would also remind yourselves and one another of the necessary obedience that comes with that. So this morning, if you have any needs that you would like to to see uh, aided, we offer you, as we always do when we gather together at time, for you to bring those needs forward and make them known so we can help you see them met as we stand and sing.